Hey designers, this is a new video on our Figma UI kit series. If you're new here, I would suggest you start with the first video. You'll find the link to that on a card somewhere here. So that will give you a bit of a context so that you can follow the series. And if you've been following this with me so far, then we are good to go. Today, I'm going to show you how we can create an interactive input field. So without any further ado, let's jump straight on my Figma screen and see how to build this from scratch. So here we have a fresh new Figma file and there's nothing in this except some color styles that we used in our UI kit. So the first thing I'm going to do here is take a frame so I'll just take a frame like this and then I'll just paste in a reference input field so that we can see what are the elements that we need to create an input field so as you can see we need a input label then we have a placeholder text and then we have some informational text if you want to give some helper just below the fields and then we also have a stroke around so it represents an input field so the first thing we need here is the input label so I'm just gonna use a label a text and create the input label here and then I'm just gonna duplicate this one and and we'll call this the placeholder. So we'll say enter input, which will act as a placeholder. And then we'll duplicate it once again. And this would be a helper text. So I'm just going to call it informational text. So there we go. We have all these three things. And we also need the stroke or the box that we see here, right? So for that, I'm just going to select the placeholder text. And we are going to place this inside an auto layout. You could put a frame, but uh, auto layout would be good because uh, resizing it helps. So the shortcut is shift A, or you could just right click and say add auto layout and that will add a box around it, which is nothing but a frame. And we'll go ahead and add some stroke to this. So I'm just gonna use a gray color as a stroke, give it some rounded corners. So I'll just give it some rounded corners like this and increase its width, right? So the width, uh, I would like to keep it like, let's say 345, since we are doing this for the mobile layout. So 345 should be good. And now we'll just align everything to the left and add another auto layout because all this has to be spaced evenly. So again, I'm gonna press Shift A and that will auto layout this one. And now as you can see, we have a basic structure of a text box ready. You can change the colors for this. So the placeholder text has to be, uh, you know, grayish in color to represent that it's just a placeholder. And then for the input field and the information text, I'm just gonna use the neutral color right here. So as you can see, we just have a basic structure of how our input field is gonna look like. I'll go ahead and delete this and this will act as a base layer, right? So the base component. So I'll just go ahead and create a component out of this. We have our base component and now we want to start creating the variants, the different variants because input field has different stages. Like once you start entering, it is in a filling mode and then you have the entered state, which is already filled. And then there could be other states like disabled or error states. So we'll create a couple of them and see how we can actually do this. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a variant to this. So for that, I just use this option to add variant. This one, let's keep it as the filling state. So I'm just going to call it filling. Could also have a cursor in this, right? So I'll call this filling with cursor. So you have the text cursor that keeps blinking. So in this stage, we just want the cursor. So I'm just you're going to use a pipe symbol here. So just the pipe symbol and also the color changes to a more darker shade. So I'm going to change the color as you can see here. Now it is basically in the filling state. So changing the color to the darker one. Yeah. So you can also indicate a filling state with uh, the stroke changing to the primary color. That is up to you, right? So if I change this to something like a blue, you can show that it is in a filling state state as well. So that is another way to do it. And then the next uh, variant could be, I'll just use the plus button here. And the next variant could be, uh, you know, the filled state. So in this state, we are going to just make this as the neutral color. So this could be the input value. So once the user has entered a value in it, and that is going to be a filled state. So I'm going to name this variant as filled. Okay. Finally, we could also do something like a error state. So I'll just add a new variant here. And in the error state, you want to indicate the user that there's an error in the text for which the stroke has to change. So I'm going to use a error system color right here. Okay. And also the information text shown here could be in an error color. So that would be this one. And this could act as your error state, right? So we'll call this variant as error. So now we have created all different variants for this and you can basically use this without any interactions. So for that, I'll just go to the assets and inside this, we have a local component. Just drag this and drop it in here. And now we can use use this option right here to use the different stages or states, right? So this would be your filled state. This could be your error state. So it's just a switch of a button from here, right? You just change it and you can start using it. Now the next step would be to add interactions to this. So for that, I'll just uh, delete this one. And now let's add interactions to it, right? So for that, I'm just going to go to the prototype tab. And once the user taps on this box right here, you want to link it to the next variant here. Once the user taps here, they would go to the filling state from the filling state 
state you want to navigate the user to the fill state and that is going to be on click instant perfect and that's it right so let's see how this behaves we just added a couple of interactions so i'll go back again uh, i'll add basically i'll take a new frame here so that we can see the demo so i'm just taking a new frame i'll just drop in the component that we created and place it in the center and we're going to play this one and there you go we have the preview here so the first thing is you have the input field i'm just going to tap here and it's going to the filling stage and then once again you tap here you have the value entered right so those are the simple interactions now let's add something a little more advanced to it so let's say you want the blinking effect of the cursor to show in that the user is about to enter so for that what we'll do is we need an extra variant here so i'll just go ahead and duplicate one of this variant probably i'm just going to place this at the top just below this one so this will act as the blinking uh, stage for this so in this case you just want to change this to zero opacity so what we're going to do is we're going to loop the interaction in between these two variants so that you get the blinking effect of the cursor right and what i mean by that let's do it in action here so i go to the prototype tab so instead of taking the user to the fill state here we are going to select the variant the parent variant and link it to the next variant here right and this is going to be after delay so after delay of one millisecond i want to do a smart animate to this one and let's keep it at let's say you know 600 milliseconds this one will again loop back to the previous one with the same after delay so again after delay of one millisecond smart animate with 600 so in simple terms what is happening here is once we have this in default variant the user taps on this they go to this variant here but once they reach here we are looping this automatically in between these two variants so the user gets a effect like the cursor is blinking and once you tap on this again you get the input value right so we also got to give the same input value here as well so it is linked to this one which is good so now let's see this in action i'm just going to go back to the preview i'll just refresh this and now once i tap on this you get this blinking effect right you can see that the cursor is blinking and once again i tap on this you can see the input value has come in so that is how we can add interactions to your input field and make this more advanced so i also have a couple of other input fields that i created like some time ago i actually created an input field where you could give in real characters using a keyboard you can check the video of that somewhere here and that's a bit of an advanced interaction so that's it for this video guys in our next video we'll be seeing how to create interactive drop downs and as always thanks for watching and and I'll catch you in the next one.